You are about to hear a romantic drama, Untamed, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine and featuring the love story girl in the role of Diane Morley. This is the love story of Diane Morley, spoiled, headstrong daughter of Zachary Morley, a wealthy sportsman who is famous for his string of polo ponies and the polo teams that he's developed. Recently, Zachary Morley has organized at the La Mesa Club a girls' polo team with which his daughter, Diane, has been playing a brilliant, if erratic, game. Our first scene opens at the polo field. The girls' team is at practice. Suddenly, Diane breaks away from the others and rides imperiously up to Toby Trent, the coach. Toby! Hello, Diane. Toby Trent, I asked you yesterday to let me ride Sugar for a while. Well, that horse... You said she was too nervous to be handled by a girl. Yep, yeah, that's right. Then why should you let a blonde nobody like Rochelle Martin ride her? That will do, Diane. I'll... You'll keep still until I finish. You're letting another girl ride Sugar, and I consider it an insult. Take it any way you like. After all, that horse is mine, and I don't intend to lend her to any spoiled, untamed, headstrong... If you mean me, I... I do mean you. You're hot-headed and vile-tempered. Oh. You've got the idea that the world revolves around you, and that everything and everybody should go just as you want them to go, and I'm sick of oh. it, personally. Sick of trying to cope with a little savage. Oh, you... You could be a brilliant player if you got over some of your conceit... Oh. And realize that it takes more than one to play polo. You disregard orders. You're selfish and headstrong. You're a goal hog, a grandstand player. Are you finished? No, I'm not. From now on, the team will dispense with your services what? until you think of yourself as one of the members instead of Diane Morley. You know what this means? It means you don't play in the Midwick game tomorrow what? unless you apologize to Rochelle and me both, publicly. To Rochelle and to you. To Rochelle and to me. Why, you're nothing but a groom around the club, doing odd jobs so you can play polo on my father's team. Remember, the La Mesa Club is my father's. His money keeps it going. You're coaching this girl's team just to keep on the right side of him. If it weren't for him, you wouldn't be allowed inside the clubhouse. You'd be down in the stable with the rest of the grooms where you belong. And I forgot to add that you are an insufferable snob. Why, you... Now, are you going to apologize or are you going to clear out of here? I apologize to no one, least of all to a groom. Very well, then. Start riding and ride fast or I'll take you off that nag and turn you over my knee. I'm going, and when I come back, there'll be a gentleman in your place. I want you to get rid of Toby Trent. What? He can't play in the men's team, and he can't coach our team. I won't have it. Well, what's the matter, honey? I thought you were all steamed up about Toby. Oh, he's not a gentleman, and he's got to go. Yeah, that's a big order, Di. Toby's a grand player. The men like him, and he comes of good people. Oh, what of it? Penniless, living in a shack up in the hills, hanging on to a string of ponies so he can have an excuse to play polo, coaching the girls' polo team to curry favor with the club. Oh, he's impossible. Well, you've been set on the girls' polo team that would make a showing. We hired coaches... Who are to... fools, all of them. Well, anyhow, they quit. I guess you made it too hot for them. Now, Toby has a real team. Uh, can't you let well enough alone? No, he insulted me. He's got to go. I hate him. Well, I, I guess that's that. Only you'll have to furnish me a reason. Reason? Well, I've got to have something I can present to the men at oh. the club. Something other than a whim of my daughter. Well, I'll find something that will knock him off his pedestal with a bang. You got any ideas? Mm. Yes. Father, I'm dining with Toby Trent at his shack tonight. 
Well, of all Oh, the... he doesn't know it yet. It's a surprise to him. I'm going up there, and later I'll phone you. I'll be excited, hysterical, and then you'll come a-running. And then? Then you'll find I've been fighting for my honor all over the place. You'll save me, and you'll have a very good reason to rise up in your fatherly wrath and smack Toby Trent down. My dear, I'm warning you. Young Trent's no weakling. You may come out second best. Oh, I can handle him. He'll end up on his knees. Don't say I didn't warn you. Sorry if I interrupted your dinner, but I came to say I'm sorry. I told you the apology had to be made in public. And what about Rochelle? Does it mean so much to you, Toby, what I do about Rochelle? Yes, it means a great deal. I, I couldn't wait until tomorrow. I, I had to come tonight. Well, now that you've spoken your piece, you can go back. I'm dangerous when I eat. Oh, I'm not afraid. I go to the zoo just to see the animals eat. Besides, I'm starving. What are you cooking there? Steak. Now, go on. Are you going? Well, it, it's dark. I, I'm not sure of the trail. Oh, very well. I'll go with you. Come on. Oh, Toby, I, I can't go and leave you like this, angry at me. I'm going to stay. All right, you'll stay. You ask for it. Toby, stop. Oh. Until you kissed me, I, I never dreamed it could be like this. nice of you to let me stay for dinner. Uh, you said you were hungry. Toby, do you like living alone like this? Yes, I like living alone. Better than having someone here? A girl like me, Toby? Much better than having a girl like you with me. I suppose you'd rather have Rochelle. Who wouldn't? Oh. I'm going to look after the ponies. You wash the dishes. That's more in your line than playing siren. Oh, is that so? How dare you say things like that to Use me? Use your energy on those dishes. You'll find hot water in the kettle. Oh, yes? Take your dishes. What? Here's another one. Hey. Telling me I belong in a sink washing dishes. Go and see you, Rochelle. <laughs> Very pretty. Well, have you finished? I hate you. When anything goes wrong, you have to break something. That's the way you're made, I guess. It's all you can do. All I can do? Well, you wait and see. Now, that phone isn't working. You can't call your father. Well, he knows I'm here. If he doesn't hear from me, he'll come up. And when he sees all this and hears my story, you'll be running out of the country just ahead of a shotgun. Oh, so you came up here to frame me. Yes, and what are you going to do about it? Just this. Let go of me. Don't you dare touch Shut me. Shut up. Oh. This is what you've been needing since the day you were born. Oh. A good, healthy spanking. Oh. This is probably the first spanking you've had in your life, and it's just about time. Oh. Nice day for the match, Toby. I don't like that nothing-to-nothing -nothing score at the end of the second checker. What do you think their chances are? Oh, pretty fair, Mr. Morley. I'm afraid the girls will have to do better than that, though, if they're going to hold that midweek bunch much longer. I wish Diane were playing. Have you seen her? No, not since last night. She seems to be a very subdued girl this morning. Any instructions, Toby? Uh, yes, Rochelle. When you get out there again, don't be afraid to hit the ball. I notice every time you ride up, you hesitate and lose momentum. You've lost a couple of goals that way. I'm sorry. Oh, hello, Diane. Where have you been all day? Toby. Toby, I want to play. For the first time in my life, I'm really apologizing. To Rochelle and to you, Toby. Okay. 
Go on in there and play. You too, Rochelle. Right. And Diane, for the first time in your life, see if you can play with the team. I'll try, Toby. Well, there's no doubt about it. She's a changed girl. And far be it for me to say it's not an improvement. Well, the game's pretty near over. The score is tied. We'd have had three more goals if Rochelle hadn't muffed those three shots. Hmm. Oh, why did Diane leave it for her every time? Why didn't she shoot it in herself? She can do it. And yet every time she rides the midweek player off and leaves the shot for Rochelle, and she misses every one of them. Well, you told Diane to play as a member of the team and to quit the solo work. Looks to me as if she is. Now look, Toby, look where the ball is. Right in front of the midweek pole. There goes Diane after it. Oh, if she only takes it. There's Rochelle right after it. She's going to let Rochelle take it. Not if I can stop her. Take it, Diane! Take it yourself! Oh, if she could only hear me. I don't know if she heard you, but she took it. We won the match. Look, that midwick player ran in for us. She's down. She's down. Come on, we've got to get off there. Darling, you're not hurt? Oh. oh, gosh, I don't think so. I just got the wind knocked out of me when, when that horse sat on me. Darling, can you ever forgive me? Forgive you for what? Oh, for treating you so cruelly. For fighting against the love that's in my heart. Oh, listen, Toby, I'm the one who needs forgiveness. I was mean and selfish. And I'll never be that way again, Toby. I'll be sweet and gentle. And you'll marry me? Anytime you say. Toby, if I'm ever nasty again, just give me another spanking, will you? Maybe you don't think I will. You have been listening to a romantic drama featuring the love story girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. <laughs>